Hello people, in this video let us look at episcleritis versus scleritis, okay? So, we have already seen separate video on episcleritis, right? So, we want to look at how it is different from scleritis. So, episcleritis affects what? It affects the episclera and scleritis affects the sclera. So, here you have the sclera, right? This white thing. This is the sclera. Here also you have that. And above that, you have the episclera, right? So, here in the histology you can see. So, here you have the episcleral tissue. This will, if this is inflamed, it will become what? Episcleritis, right? This is episcleritis and this is the sclera proper. So, this will become scleritis. So, basic difference you have got. And behind the, uh, the sclera, you have lamina fusca. So, in episcleritis, there is no pain, okay? So, this is the main thing that you have to focus here. In episcleritis, there is no pain. The person usually comes because of the redness, concerned with the redness, okay? So, let us look at episcleritis. There is no pain, okay? It affects what? It affects the episclera. There are types again in this diffuse nodular etc. that you have to look at in episcleritis video. This is bright red in color, okay? Red, remember bright red in color which brings the patient to the doctor. There is, um, it is an idiopathic condition. Other causes can be some hypersensitivity, gout, etc. Remember, this is uh, mostly idiopathic. There is no treatment required. It resolves spontaneously or they are suggesting some NSAIDs, which we have already seen in the episcleritis video. So, self-resolving is important. Self-resolving and topical, topical NSAIDs. Okay. So, where are we here? So, here we have to write that treatment will be topical NSAIDs. Okay. So, basically this is a very superficial condition. This is a little more superficial, right, than the scleritis. So, when they put a phenylephrine drops, which is 10%, the vessels undergo blanching. So, they become white. So, the redness goes away on putting phenylephrine, which will constrict the vessels. Where do you use phenylephrine, nasal decongestant, etc., right? So, the same, that kind of drops they are using here and there will, there will be blanching. Now, coming to scleritis, okay, let's move on to scleritis. So, basically, scleritis, it is very painful. So, this is what is important here. It is very painful. What type of pain? Deep boring kind of uh, pain. Boring means uh, drilling kind of pain looks like. Uh, deep boring pain. It wake, uh, the person wakes up early because of the pain. They cannot move the eye and this is slightly more complex than the episcleritis. So, it requires attention. Okay. So, it affects what? It affects the sclera. And in this also, there are a lot of types. You have anterior, posterior. In anterior, you have diffuse, nodular, same words that you saw in episcleritis. Then you have something very important that is necrotizing. Necrotizing is very important because it can lead to perforation, right? So, that is very important, the necrotizing one. Then you have posterior when it is affecting the posterior part. So, you have what types? You have anterior and posterior based on the insertion of the rectus uh, muscles. So, anterior, you have what and all? Diffuse, nodular, then necrotizing, then posterior you have. Okay. So, all these are types of scleritis. So, coming back here. Here, they are saying it is violet blue in color. This image might help for you. So, this is anterior necrotizing scleritis with inflammation. This can just burst out, they say. Okay. So, it is violet blue in color. Here, there will be scleral edema. This is another important word for you. Scleral edema, where will it be there? And scleritis. Scleral, scleral, name itself says sclera. Autoimmune, this is associated with autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, erythematosus, etc. This is what is important. Here, it is autoimmune. It is associated with autoimmune condition. When it comes to episcleritis, this was mostly idiopathic hypersensitivity, etc. Now, treatment uh, in case of scleritis, because it is autoimmune, right, they will give what? They will give, uh, uh, first of all, they will uh, give uh, NSAIDs. There also it was NSAIDs, but here it is oral because it's more a little more deep. So, they will give oral NSAIDs. After that, if it doesn't work, systemic steroids. And even if they don't work, immunomodulators, cyclophosphamide, because this is an autoimmune condition. And here, when you put 10% phenylephrine drops, the vessels do not blanch because they are a little deeper. So, this covers the difference between episcleritis and scleritis. Can you summarize the difference between episcleritis and scleritis? Okay, let's try. So, here you have episcleritis and here you have scleritis. Here, there is no pain. Here, there is pain. Here, there is scleral edema. 
Here it is red in color. It is self-resolved. And uh, let's continue here. Uh, scleritis, what is it? It is autoimmune. It is associated with autoimmune condition. Here you will give oral NSAID systemic steroids immunomodulators. Here you just no, don't need to do anything in episcleritis. You can, uh, it is uh, resolving or you can give topical NSAIDs. Okay. So that is what are the main differences. Let us look at this. Again, did we miss some types are there? Okay. And uh, that's it. That's it. So this covers uh, episcleritis versus scleritis.